Uh, so we are in a, these uh, relate to, well, these and actually previous question, they relate to this other section. So uh, as we are talking about interference, really the biggest thing is that you get interference, wave interference when you have two or more sources of wave. And in the, what we are, what we have covered last, last week, we've done double slit, which has two sources based on the two slits that the light can go through. And the other example where you have multiple light sources is interference in thin films. And they're the multiple sources. They come from reflections on different surfaces. So that's what we are working through here. So it says a uh, soap bubble is uh, this thick. Uh, let me just start drawing so that I have some uh, picture to anchor my thinking to. So I'm going to just draw the soap bubble surface uh, vertically. So I illuminate by white light, instant to perpendicular to its surface. So I have one reflection here and I have another reflection here. What wavelength of visible light is most constructively reflected? Oh, uh, assuming the soap bubble film has the same, yeah. So this has index of uh, refraction of 1.33. So I'm gonna have to work out some mathematical expression. And this kind of scenario is where really the best thing to do and what I recommend that you do is fall back on the most uh, basic relationship that you have when you're dealing with interference. The most basic relationship you have is based on the phase difference. So whenever the phase difference is 2 pi, one full cycle, or some multiple of the integer multiple of the one full cycle, that's where you get constructive interference. And when the phase difference is equal to some uh, odd multiple of pi, so I guess one way to express it is 2n plus 1 pi, um, this is when you get destructive interference. And you can see how uh, when two waves, oscillating wave sources are half a, or um, all the integer of pi radian apart or half a cycle apart, then as one goes up, the other will go down and they will destructively interfere. So with that, um, questions like this, it's a two-step thing. Uh, first, with all the given information, you need to figure out the phase relationship. Because so once you have an expression for the phase, then you can connect it to either of these and work through the question. So let me um, kind of ponder this setup and think through the phases here. So I have n equals one outside on either side. So on this reflection here, I'm going to have a phase difference of pi. And what I'm looking at eventually is the interference between these two rays. So call this ray one, call this ray two. So what I'm interested in is the phase difference or the kind of the additional phase accumulated by beam two minus the additional phase accumulated by beam one. And you can actually swap these in terms of figuring out constructive versus destructive. The order here doesn't actually matter. So, so okay, I think I've already figured out some of V1. I have this pi phase shift. I'm going to need to include that. And I need to work through V2. So this beam is kind of complicated. It goes through this uh, film of soap once, and then it reflects here. Now on this reflection, because it's from higher to lower index of refraction, the phase shift will be zero. And then it continues to travel here. And then the rest of the path mimics the path for beam one. So with the beam two, what you really have is this um, additional path length. And there's gonna be a phase shift associated with that. And that kind of phase shift can most uh, intuitively be written this way they can be written as, um, all right, so I have some additional distance. Let me call that delta x. I want to express it as a fraction of the wavelength. 
And if this was one, for example, that would be one full cycle. For that, I need a two pi radian. So this is kind of the expression you might guess it, and that is correct. Just have to refine it a little bit. When I say delta x, I have to realize, um, huh, given this uh, thickness, let me call that thickness t, the beam 2 actually goes through it twice. So uh, this delta x has going to be 2 times the thickness of the field. Okay, um, and with the wavelength, like if you consider this carefully, um, you can't just use the, uh, or you know, you can't just use this wavelength. Like if you did that, um, that doesn't work because the wavelength within this medium will be different. So I really need to use the wavelength in the medium, which will be the vacuum wavelength divided by index of refraction. In a material with a larger index of refraction, light travels slower, so its wavelength is more kind of compressed. So with those corrections in mind, this is what the expression for V2 is. It's a 2 pi times uh, 2 nt divided by lambda naught. And remember, t is thickness, not time. Um, Okay, I have that, and I already have phi one. So let me write out this expression for delta phi. That's going to be two pi times, uh, or let me simplify it as I write. It's a four pi, um, four pi and t over the vacuum wavelength, which I will be entering here. Minus pi is oh, and we are looking for constructive interference, so. Um, well, this is going to be some um, even mult or uh, the integer multiple of 2 pi. So I stare at this uh, expression for a bit. And here, what I'm really solving for is, and I used n in two different senses. Let me use this as m <laughs> so that it doesn't get confused with the index or refraction. Um, so as you look at this expression, I hope you have this sense that um, the wavelength is an unknown. I'm trying to solve for it. Thickness, I have it, good. N, I have it, good. I don't have M. And this is where you kind of uh, to, um, go through trial and error. So imagine your M was, I don't know, what if your m was equal to 1? Then, you know, imagine going through solving for lambda naught. Then I hope you see that as you move pi over, you have 3 pi. Hmm. Looks like that could have been smaller. So maybe not m equals 1, but m equals 0. Then the right-hand side would be 0. When I move pi over, then that would be just a pi. Hmm. And that would be value that can't go any smaller. So it comes down to the question of, do I want to start out with m equals to zero? And does that kind of conform with the, the uh, statement most uh, constructively reflected? And that's the kind of thing that you would think through, maybe read through the section again, to see if that all of that makes sense. Once you come to a conclusion that yes, that is what you want. You want kind of smallest uh, um, order possible. You want um, this right-hand side to be as small as you can make it. Then yeah, set m equals equal to zero. And you can do the rest of the algebra. Finally, ending at this. I'm just going to do that in my head. That will be lambda naught is equal to 4nt. I think that's right. Yep, that's the um, expression. Let me just plug in the uh, numbers. Uh, and I think here it's a kind of simple is to just uh, uh, type in the numbers. Because <laughs> it's all multiplication 4 times n, 1.33 times the thickness, 115 in nanometers. And I'll get an answer in nanometers is 611.8, so 612. I mean, you don't have to round, but it's going to round. And we'll see. 
yeah, that's it. So um, usually this uh, thinking process that I go through in handling this uh, thin film interference. Now, you know, you can um, look up the formula. I'm pretty sure if you looked, oh, I, already, I was already in the section. I think uh, this uh, might even have some examples worked out. Uh, yeah, this is one of the examples worked out. You can kind of think of this as a formula. And what I will say is that um, that will mislead you because with a reflection like this, I can change some things. Like I can change the medium on the other side instead of being air, maybe it's oil or something. And whatever right formula you might have looked up from an example or whatnot, they don't broadly apply. They don't, they are not generally correct. Uh, the only approach that is always correct and you can rely on time over time is the approach you see here, where you consider the picture and you um, uh, work through the actual interference conditions, work out the phase relationships and uh, where necessary, do some trial and error, figuring out some parameters. That's the only way you can ensure that 10 out of 10 times, you can get questions like this, right? The formulas you might look up, if it happens to exactly match the situation you're trying to answer, then, then it'll work. If not, then it won't work. So, okay, let's, uh, we have questions 13 and 14 left. Um, let's see, can I reuse much of what I was doing for question 13? Okay, what is most uh, constructively reflect the wavelength? Okay, I, I think I can do much of this. So um, I'll just uh, modify some of the stuff here. So um, this n equals one air. I think that's fine. We are from air. We have oil. So instead of being n equals one point three three, it'll be n equals one point four zero, and it's on water. Oh, oh, which is good because uh, index of refraction of water is n equals 1.33. Here, the nice thing is the relationships we had before, the relative sizes of index of refraction, that hasn't changed, which means all the derivation that went into this, all this expression is good. So I can continue to use that. Um, so I can probably just use this. Uh, it's still thickness. Yeah. And again, I see the allure where you can kind of, especially where you see that you can reuse a formula. This is, I think, where people get stuck on that right formula approach. Um, and it's uh, one of the most uh, pernicious thing because um, it would be almost better if an approach like this never worked. Then, you know, after a few times of this not working, people will learn, oh, this doesn't work. Let's do something else. But approach like this works maybe half the time, three quarters of the time. <laughs> it's the times when it doesn't work that perplexes you. Um, and, you know, times when it uh, does work gives you the confidence that this is the right approach. And it's, uh, again, um, this is where you have to do the extra work of going the extra distance and making sure you are just not relying on the right formula. Um, minimum thickness of an oil slick on water that appears red. And again, they here they really gave a, like if the index of refraction of oil was not 1.4, but 1.3 or 1.2, then all like this would have been ruined and you would have to set up a different base. But here all the setup works out to be that all this stuff that we did for previous questions, they are all still valid. They will all still work. The only thing I need to do is I need to solve this instead of for thickness, because we are given the wavelength and we are asked for thickness. So doing that, the thickness is the wavelength divided by 4n. But please don't memorize that as right formula. Again, there's many things I can do to this setup to make it so that this formula doesn't work anymore. And there are many real life situations where this doesn't work anymore. So yeah, please watch out for that. So the thickness is the wavelength divided by the 
4 divided by the index of refraction, so 116 nanometer. And again, I, it's one of those, um, you know, like this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> um, what it might look like is um, me showing you the virtues of finding the right formula and plugging the numbers to it. Uh, because it appears to work. <laughs> but what I'm telling you is that watch out, even though it works, it doesn't always work. It, um, and uh, you should uh, build your general problem solving skill muscle so that when this doesn't work, uh, you can go through the exact thing I was going through from scratch. That's what I want everyone to be able to do.